be as good as new. Well, that's a nice patching job, if I do say so myself. Joel? Joel Benza? Yeah? I ain't gonna call you again. <laughs> Sounds like a hound dog baying in the rain barrel. That, that man is never on time for meals. Clear the thing. I ain't gonna wait any longer. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Letty always saying, hurry, hurry. I ain't going to hurry. I want to take my own time. Oh, let's see. Hey, that's a nice old-fashioned pool. Hate to give it away. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Uncle Joe. Oh, I wouldn't bring those in here if I were you. You know Miss Letty. Oh, will you put them out on the back porch for me? That's a good girl. Joel Bantam, how many times must I tell you that this is a boarding house I'm running and not a hotel? Just about one more time. I had some things to do. Now I just Things have to... to do? Messing with that dirty old fishing tackle. They it ain't dirty. I'll have if something. I catch you taking it up my clean stairs again, I if swan out. If I catch out. you messing with my personal belongings in my room, I... It ain't going to be your room any longer if you stuff any more of that smelly old fish in the icebox. What any more smelly than your old icebox? If you don't like my icebox, you don't like the food that comes out of it. So the meal's over, unless you want some bread and butter. Now, never mind. I ain't hungry. He took my appetite. There are some folks make me wish the rebels had won the war. Joel. Huh? For you. Oh, thanks, Kathy. For Tom. Oh. Hmm. That's mighty nice of you. Hey, Benji. Hi, Joel. How's Tom? How is he? I'm telling you, it's all metal. Flat on his back and won't get up. Well, I'll get him up. I got some soup here, and a surprise. Hello, Tom. How are you feeling today? Hey, hey, it's a beautiful day. And the boys tell me the fishing is fine. And look here. Look here. Watch this, Howard. Give me some glue. And I mend that this as good as new. <laughs> See? Hey, now what about getting up and going fishing with me? Yeah. Afraid I won't go fishing anymore. Oh, you? fiddlesticks. You'll be prancing around in a couple of days. No. Not this time. Well, you ain't telling me you're going to forfeit that chess game. Your next move, and you win a dime. Afraid I'd forfeit more than a dime. I've been hoping that maybe I would win that fun, what was set aside for the last bet. I wanted that money bad. I wanted it bad. Now, you ain't still fretting over that. Ain't neither of us got much chance. Oh, it ain't for me. But I keep thinking what it would mean to Ray. He ain't never thought of you all these years. Never even wrote you. Well, that... That was my fault. I should have kept him here. Grace left him in my care, and I... I failed. I failed. No, 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 Tom, don't go exciting yourself. I failed her bad. But you are failed. <coughs> he more than most of us. Maybe you will do it for me. Now take it easy, Tom. Take it easy. I'd do it for you. You know I would. Yeah, I know. Now, promise me you'll find him and see if he's heading right. Promise me then. All right, Tom. All right. I'll look after Ray. Ray Riggins, Elite Social Club, Chicago. Come back at once. Very sick. Grand, uh... Say, I didn't know you had a grandson. Uh, hey, it's Tom's boy. 
this the best dress you've got? Best I know. If you don't get it, it ain't my fault. Straight? Hmm? Straight? Oh, you mean do I want him to get it right away? Yeah, sure. 45 cents. Say, Wilma, huh? will you trust me till I get next month's pension check? Sure, Uncle Joe. Your credits always go with me. I wish the rest of this tight walk town thought so. Where's my gun? What's the idea of hiding it on me? Nothing's hid. Everything's in its proper place in your room. You mean this is my room? Yep. Don't make sense. I smell something, and it ain't fish. <laughs> Joel, if you ain't the doubtless soul. <laughs> you know, after you left this morning, I got to thinking. And I said to myself, it's foolish the way Joel and me bicker all the time, when all I want is for him to be happy and us to be real friends. Mighty sudden one. What's the idea? Well, didn't Kathy tell you that we just heard about it? So old Tom finally passed away. Yeah. And as soon as Benji sent a wire to the GAR headquarters to tell him about it, back comes a wire saying that now Uncle Joel is the only veteran left. Whistling Woodchuck, the last veteran. Now he'll get the $50,000. $50,000? Yes, sir, the fun for the last one. All the old soldiers have been chipping in for 20 years. And Uncle Joel hit the jackpot. Suffered Salamander, wait till the fellas downtown hear this. Miss Letty's got it pretty well started already. And now the whole town knows it. So old Tom's gone. Yes, Joel. And do you realize what it means? It means you're the last one. All those boys that bucked it out them four long years at Sumter. Malvin Hill, Hagerstown, Seven Pines, Vicksburg. Men like Bill Will Appleby, Trent Noyes, Richie Cooper, Jeff Harris, and old Tom. Mr. Lincoln. General Grant, General Lee, as fine a soldier as ever walked in boots. All kinds of men, some good, some bad, some just middling like most of us. Freezing, starving, dying, crawling on their bellies if they had to, but always toward that idea they had shooting and killing men like ourselves, because that's the only way things could be held together and winning out in the end and watching the country go on to greatness. Men done that. 
sound American men. And now, I'm the only one left. The only one left. thrilling, glorious day, ladies and gentlemen. The entire community gathered to pay homage to the last of that great army of patriots that kept these states of ours united. Now the mayor of Cleardale, Mr. Henry Scudders, is about to make formal presentation of the town scroll of honor. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Henry Scudders. Quite a shindig, Henry. Ladies and gentlemen, as mayor of our city, it is with great pleasure I introduce a lovable homespun character, Mr. Benton. What's the matter, Henry? You forget my name's Joel? <laughs> All right, Uncle Joel. As representative of this community, I wish to extend hearty congratulations. We are come here in the true spirit of love, proud of the unique fame you brought to our fair community, happy that we were able to keep you and help you and do for you just as we know you would be happy to do for us. Never mind the fancy talk, Henry. Thanks for the sentiment. I know just how the folks feel. I don't want that dang busted thing. <laughs> I ain't lived in this town all my life without knowing everybody better than they know themselves. And I know what you're all thinking. $50,000 is a lot of money, more than enough for an old man. And I guess you all got more ways of spending it than I have. Ed Tucker over there, he'd finance cars that he'd repossess. Ain't that right, Ed? Yeah. Letty? She'd buy new furniture for her rooms so she could raise the rent. <laughs> and Henry, he'd use it in the bank to make cash loans at big interest. <laughs> yes, sir. I can see you're all waiting to hear what I'm going to do with it. And I guess you're all getting ready to spend it for me. Well, you might just as well relax. Because there ain't one of you gonna touch a red cent of it. You ill-tempered old troublemaker. You got no right to talk that way. You listen to me. You stand up here and spout a lot of stuff you don't believe and nobody else does. You smirch the name of our town. If the town's been smirched, it's because of you. You defile my office and the reverence of this occasion. Reverence? <laughs> Before I got this money, I was just a pesky old man that nobody wanted round except once a year to lead your decoration day parade. After that, you put me away with the flags and the mothballs. You kept away from me as if I had the plague. All of you. Except Kathy. And I'll see to it she's well taken care of. Outside of that, I'm going to do for you just what you've always done for me. Exactly nothing. things could be said about Joel Bentham, but meanness was never one of them. The old rascal. Just handed me the envelope when he got in the truck with Benji and said, he always wanted to get educated. Dang busted, now go ahead and do it. Oh, Miss Letty. Now, 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 don't start bawling. You got enough money there to get so educated, you won't have a brain left in your head. You know, Joel, before they fixed this road, it was terrible. Yeah, big improvement. You think you're doing right, Joel? After all, Thomas Place ain't so perspicuity. I don't care. I couldn't move fast enough. Letty sure was upset when she found out you was going to move. <laughs> I surprised her, all right. 
<laughs> I wonder what Letty said when she found out you give Kathy that $5,000. Oh, never mind about that. Hey, what's this? Hey, Seth. What's the party for? Greeting a train load of young bulls. Got word from Plainfield they're heading this way. What about it? Gonna drub them and drive them out of town. That's what about it. About as friendly and full of good sense as everything else in this town. I ain't gonna allow this town to be overrun by no tramps. Do you ever stop to think that kicking them around and never giving them a helping hand is keeping them tramps? <laughs> ain't none of them no good. All they do is just lie and mooch and steal. Here she comes, boy. Come on, don't let none of them get away. Now look at that. I suppose that's what you'd call good, clean fun. Give me a break, will you? Stand look out, Sonny. Come on, Grandpa. I'll do the same for you someday. Oh. A couple of them come this way, Mr. Bentham. Did you see... I it? ain't seen any. You must have ducked you. Who's this? Oh, this? This is uh, my granddaughter. Might be a meal ticket and a wash house, too. You'll give me a scoffy? Huh? Something to eat. Oh, I reckon so. Say, that's swell of you. And I didn't even give you a straight sob. Straight sob? A sad story. Oh. But don't mind me. Us road kids have got a lingo all our own. Yeah. <laughs> Queer talk, all right. Yeah. But how about the grub? Guess I've got time. Time? You ain't going no place, are you? Oh, I gotta join the tribe in a jungle about 10 miles from here. Tribe? Yeah, travel together makes things easier. Can't stay long because I don't want to miss them. Mm. Well, nobody asks you to stay long. No place around here for a young girl. Now leave the rest of them things be, Benji, and come in the house and rustle some food. Say, I put some water on the heat for that bath you've been asking about. <laughs> Guess it'll be about the first time you ever took a bath in a... Storehouse. Storehouse? Say, it's the first chance I've had to take a bath in this county. <laughs> hey, tell me, you just go from one place to the other? You gotta. What else can you do when all you get is floaters to move on? Why don't you go home? What home? Well, where'd you come from this trip? Oh, been kind of on a circle tour. Started north at Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg? Oh, huh? I was a drummer boy there with General Burnside. You in the Civil War? Was I in the Civil Say, I'll bet I've been more historic places than you. Harper's Ferry, Chancellorville, Shiloh, Spotsylvania, Richmond, Petersburg. Well, I sure remember Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg? Say, I stood right on the spot where Burnside crossed the Rappahannock to chase Jackson. You stood on the spot? Gal, I pushed the general's boat off. I was only a boy, but I was so excited that they're making an advance that I jumped right into the general's boat. Out with you, says he. We've got no place here for boys. So they threw me off. But I pushed the boat off, and then I hung on to the gunnels. When we got to the other side, a bullet ripped right through my drum. I dropped it, and I picked up a gun that was lying there, and I went on with the boy. And I brought back a prisoner, too. The general, when he saw me, he says, boy, I glory in your spunk. Keep on this way a few more years, and you'll be in my place. Uh, I sure remember Fredericksburg. So do I. Lost a sister there. Lost a sister? How come? Riding freight. Foot slipped off a greasy journal box and she went under the wheels. I'm sorry. Maybe I shouldn't have mentioned Fredericksburg. Oh, forget it. That part of the war road kids are always in. Well, meet for the storehouse from that back. Over there in the barn. 
things up, kind of. Yeah. Uh, what? Too bad she can't stay. Benji, what's getting into you? Well, she ain't got nobody. We ain't got nobody. No, not so. Oh, no, 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 I got a lot of things to do. What things? Well, fishing. And, and fishing. No, I can't have no young girl tied to my apron strings. Think she's after your $50,000? Now, Benji, you know I don't mean that. Well, she's been before. I reckon she can beg again. Been kind of lucky around them freight cars, too. Reckon she's nimble enough not to get hurt like her sister did. Well, supposing she even would stay. What could she do? Well, she could help me with the cooking. Yeah, and help you show what you need. Well, Grap, guess I better be making tracks. Oh, master. Uh, can you cook? Who, me? The worst cook on the whole road. You see? Go on. You ask her. Hmm? Oh, say, listen. We was, uh, we was thinking of, um, of doing a little redecorating around here. We thought maybe you might stay a couple of days and help us along. Oh, thanks, but I'd better be going. Well, anyway, thanks for the grub. We thought that uh, maybe uh, you'd stay and be sort of, well, uh, sort of handyman for us. Oh, it's nice you did ask, Graf, and you've both been swell, but I've got to get going with the tribe. They're expecting me. Well, are you satisfied? No. Nope. You? I'll get the jitterbus and we take it to a tribe. Tribe? You know, a gang that's waiting for her at the jungle. Who's that? Strange car. I wonder if it would be... Yep, it's Ray. I told you he'd come. Bet it's for no good. Hello, Benzie. Hi, Ray. This is Joel Bentham. Best friend of your grandfather. Hi. Hello. I came down as soon as I got your letter about Grandpa's death. Yeah? But you didn't come when you got to where he was sick. Well, I, I was tied up. Otherwise, I'd... I'll be going, Gramp. Oh, this is Miss, uh, uh, Miss, uh... Meg. A uh, young friend of mine. Hello, Maggie. My name's Meg. All right, Meg. Hey, you don't mind waiting. We're going to take it down the road to peace. We won't be long. Say, Gramp, how about me taking along a few of those spuds? Sure, help yourself. Thanks, the gang can always use them. Too bad you couldn't have got here before. I always wanted to, but... Well, we never got along so well together. I guess he was a good old guy at that. One of the best. Oh, he had his annoying points, but don't we all? He sure annoyed you enough about Ray. Benji. About me? Kept after him about looking after you, knowing that Joel would never break a promise. Well, that's one promise he won't have to break or keep. I'm not going to stay around here. You ain't staying? No, I just came down to sort of settle things. Yeah, and then? Back to the city where I belong. Well, I... I kind of promised Tom that I'd kind of look after you, but appears as if you didn't need no looking after. Well, as a matter of fact, I am a little short. Need some money, and I thought... How much do you need? What's the farm worth? It ain't worth nothing. A couple of thousand? Do you know anybody who might buy it? I might. <laughs> Fine. Can we sell it right away? Sure. Oh, I, I've got to get back to the city. You, you know, my job there. All right, just wait a minute. Say, he's a pretty good old guy at that, isn't he? Does he bank in town? Don't bank. Well, didn't he go in to write a check? Went to get the cash. Cash? 
Does he keep his money in the house? Well, he keeps a little. Two thousand. $2,000. Mr. Bentham, you're a lifesaver. In consideration of this, I'll sign over the rights to all the property belonging to Grandpa. Oh, you don't need to do that, son. How's that, Gramp? I'll give you a lift. But Ray's going back your way. Do you mind? Nope. Ride's ride. Let's go. Now, here, let me take this. Well, goodbye, Mr. Bentham. I won't forget you for this. I'll drop in and see you one of these days. Goodbye, Benji. Bye. Nice to see that sour puss of yours again. Now, remember, son, this is still your home whenever you need it. Thanks. That makes me feel better. Well, that's probably the last we'll ever see of him. Afraid so. Sad thing about good blood. The way it thins out sometimes. And you really don't know, Mr. Bentham. No. I feel like I do. You know, there's a right old guy. You should have stayed there. Me? Stay in that place? What do you want me to do, go fatty? I've seen places a lot worse. I don't doubt that. Yeah, you know, he's kind of a funny old guy at that, uh, keeping all his money out there. Funnier still, he's got two grand to keep. Two grand? He's got 50. What? Benji told me. Joel just won the prize for being the last Civil War victim. 50,000 smackers. Hey, that's a lot of ten. <laughs> it ain't hay. I think I'll pull in here and get some gas. Ten. Say, old man Bentha made a mistake. He gave me a hundred dollars too much. I'll have to take it back to him. Maybe it was a present. Yeah, yeah, maybe it was. You know, I, I bet a guy could learn a lot from people like that. Especially if he's got 50 grand. Well, here's the end of your ride to nowhere, sister. You mean you're going back? Look, I'm only supposed to give you a lift, not the history of my life. Because if you were going back, I've been thinking. A guy travels too much, he ends up nothing. And I don't want to do that. I just decided that I'll take up that offer of Gramps and sort of look after him and Benji. That'll be, uh... Yeah, I know. Just keep the change. Joel! Joel! We're coming back! Hi, Grant. Oh, what's the matter? Did you forget something? No, Uncle Joel. I got to remembering, and it brought me back. You too? I got to thinking that I'd like to try that cooking job. Fine, but what made you both change your mind? Well, it might sound kind of silly, but, well... Well, I saw some of the places I used to play and people I used to know, and I started thinking about Grandpa, and it did something to me. Well, I'm mighty glad to have you back. And Tom would... Ain't it swell? It sure is. And I'd like to know those people too. Uh, come on in. We'll start getting things shaped up. First time I ever heard of a man of your age getting a family. Oh, and uh, Uncle Joel, I found out in the gas station that you'd give me a hundred dollars. Oh, now, now, son, they're just a little extra. Some folks that want to have good blood around expect to pay for the privilege. You probably won't be disappointed there. Come on. Wait a minute. Not like that. Like this. Golly, I feel kind of guilty being the only one around here not working. Hey, I didn't know you was a painter, son. I'm not. 
I'm just showing little Miss Rustic here that anybody can do what she's been doing if they want to. Oh. Well, if you're aiming to show us you can plan that potato field, you better go to town and get some work clothes. Say, look, what do you two think I am? A handyman? Hey, not as handy as you might be. <laughs> Say, Meg, don't you want to go in town and get some curtains? Don't need them. Don't you want to get some, uh, uh, well, some dresses? Me? Dresses? Oh. I haven't had a dress since I wore three cornered pants. Well, it's high time you had something decent to wear. All right. And I guess there are a few other things we need. Can't find anything more to make use of around here. Well, I'll send Benji in with you. I'll take her in. Well, I thought you didn't want to go to town. Look, do I have to explain it? Well, I've got to send a note and some money to the guy who owns the car he came down in. He's the worrying kind. Come on, Meg. Bright sort of lad, ain't he? I wouldn't give two cents for any other kind. Too bright for farm work, I'm thinking. Wonder if he's on a level about lightning gear. What else? Trouble is, you talk too much with your mouth, you old coot. Not enough with your head. The old boy's getting as crazy as a caterpillar. Say, I'm the best little bundle care that ever bundled a bundle. Mm. You are? You said it. Then bundle up and fly away. Oh, thaw out, baby. You and me can go for a nice little picnic. It's us too. Thanks. I'd love it. Yeah? Swell. After you, Mr. Sampson. Very good, ma'am. <laughs> Say, for a little doll, you packed quite a wallop. <laughs> yeah. You mail your letter? Yeah. Say, what are you hanging around here for? What's your angle? What do you mean, angle? Well, a guy like you wouldn't be hanging around a place like this unless he had a pretty good angle. All right. So I've got an angle. So what? So nothing. Just as long as it don't cost Grant nothing. Now listen, you keep your nose out of my business or... Oh, what? <laughs> the ideas you get. Why shouldn't I be on the level with the old man? He's been square with me. That's just what worries me. American Legion wants me as their guest of honor in Chicago on the 30th. Well, that's great. <clears throat> you going? Of course he is. I've marched every decoration day of my life, but I never thought it would be as exciting as this. Say, Uncle Joe, that'll be a real thrill, won't it? Sure will. Look, they're planning great doings for me. Well, I'll say. The president's going to talk to him from Washington. Imagine, the president talking to me. <laughs> I tell you, the Civil War wasn't fought for nothing. Well, while you're gone, I'll get the rest of the place in order. Oh, but you're all going with me. Better start working now, then. A lot of things to be done before we go. Here, let me have the rest of my things. Hey, what's come over the boy? What do you think, Grant? The city slicker bought himself some work clothes. Country air got me. I thought it was the scenery. Well, if you must know, Curly Locks, it was Uncle Joel. Come on, young fella. After I change my clothes, I'll teach you how to plant taters. All right, boy, let's go to work. Because I've got to get out my parade uniform. Yes, sir. And then you'll have to sew a couple of buttons on my blouse. <laughs> Someday that dang busted thing's gonna scalp me. Huh, quick thinker, ain't you? Why didn't I never think of that before? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't figure out why a fellow like him would want to stay around here. Can you? Likes it, I guess. Think so? Well, I reckon he bears watching. You like him, don't you? Well, I don't dislike him. Wouldn't want to see him get in no trouble, would you? Why should I care? Oh, don't know. Just ask him. 
course, I wouldn't want to see Joe lose his money either, would you? No. No, I wouldn't. Or uh, get so farted over some young flippity gibbet that wasn't worth it. That right? Well, I... Do you think... I think I ought to tell Joel that he, that he ought to watch out a little. Don't you? Well, I... Can't say, Benji. Can't say. That's all I wanted to hear. And I'm telling you, Joel, he bears close watching. Meg thinks so, too. She does, eh? Well, I think she does. Didn't say nothing, but she looked kind of funny. Stop painting. Benji Collins, you're an old busybody. Joel, I'm just telling you for your own good. My own good? Go hang. The boy ain't done anything to even make you suspect him. The trouble with you is you're down on him for no good reason. Yeah, and the trouble with you is you can't see past your nose. Anybody who wasn't playing ostrich could see Ray ain't fitted to a place like this. He's Tom Riggins' boy, ain't he? He's coming around, ain't he? I don't think he is. Yeah, and I suppose wanting to give back that hundred dollars wasn't on the square. Maybe he's playing for hire stake. Nah, no boy of Tom Riggins would steal. But I still got my idea. Well, then I reckon you know what you can do. You mean I... Joel. You mean you're telling me to get out? I'm telling you the boy's going to stay. And nothing's going to be said and nobody's going to be watched. And I don't want to hear it anymore. Any more. 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 If you got kinks, it takes them out. If you hate, put them in. <laughs> you know, when I was young, I used to think these things grew on the ground just like coal. Yeah, potato mine, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I can remember Grandpa trying to tell me how to plant them with the eyes down. He said if you planted them with a knife, they'd come up peeled. <laughs> I bet he told you if you wanted sweet potatoes, you sprinkled the ground with sugar, eh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I guess he was a pretty good old guy at that. I'm glad to have you with me, Ray. Well, uh, it's been swell of you to put up with me this way. I guess I haven't been too sociable. Oh, just adjusting yourself, son. Takes time, Zorg. Well, I, I guess I've always been a rube underneath. I've just been fighting against this because I really like it. I've been waiting to hear you say that, Ray. Benji? Yeah, Joel ain't to... I, uh... I'm sorry Joel ain't to home, Letty. You see, so many folks come snooping around, uh, he spends most of his time, uh... Fishing. <laughs> I know, Benji. <laughs> My, I miss those nice, tasty fish he was always bringing home. <laughs> yeah. I know. Gracious, you and Joel certainly have things all tidied up here. <laughs> Whole place looks different. Yep, me and Joel likes to have things all hunky-dory. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you'd like to see the inside, Letty. Oh, Benji, that's lovely of you to ask me inside. Hmm, <laughs> curtains. Well, it's funny material, but it's practical. Yep. Won't show dirt easy. No. My, my, you certainly have got things. Couldn't have it any spicker myself out here. <laughs> I heard you and Joel have been pretty snug lately. Yeah, mighty comfortable. About the only thing Joel misses is uh, them grand pies you used to make. Man's sakes, almost forgot. <laughs> Brought a lovely surprise over for you and Joel. <laughs> no. Now, what in thunder can that be? It, it, it can't be a... Well, it's one of my nicest apple pies. <laughs> Howling rattlesnakes. Baked it with my own hands. <laughs> you know, since Kathy's been gone to school, I've been doing all my own cooking and baking. Yeah, you always was famous for your apple pies, Letty. Well, they always bring the highest prices at the church bazaar. Uh, no wonder. <laughs> well, I guess I'll be running along. <laughs> My, my. I hope you like the pie. Yeah. I'll know all about it in two shakes. You know, I kind of thought as long as I was out this way, I'd run over and see Aunt Sarah Bunch. Good idea. Poorly lately. Yeah. 
Besides, it's got a crochet pattern I want to get. Uh -huh. Well, goodbye, Benji. You and Joel run in and see me sometime, will you? We're going. Goodbye. Now, if that pie is poisoned, it's my duty to protect Joel and find out. Yeah, I can remember coming here when I was a kid. I bet you were a funny looking kid. Even then. The gang of us used to come here swimming. Play lucky to do it. <laughs> the rest of the kids always got the tar whale at them, but Grandpa never had the heart to lick me. That's probably what you missed. A good whaling. You know, I got an idea you've got sort of a grudge against me. Haven't you? Mm, sort of. I think you've had things too easy. Not especially. What do you do in the city, Ray? Oh, get by. Oh, racket. There you go, asking questions again. Well, if you ain't ashamed to answer them, you shouldn't mind my asking them. I think you're just jealous because Grandpa likes me best. Well, he should. He's practically his own flesh and blood. You know, I don't think I really believe what I just said. Grant likes you best. So does Benji. And so do I. Come on. Last one in's a rotten egg. <laughs> so here's 20 bucks for some more rent on your broken down heat. What a guy. He borrows my car for a day or two, keeps it a couple of weeks, and then calls it names. Yeah, I want you to take the 20 bucks and cut out squawking. I wonder where he got a hold of that. He must have struck something pretty soft out there. <laughs> Listen to this. You should see me being a farmer. Or maybe it's just as well you muslers don't see me. It sure would give you a treat to see me playing chess at night with Uncle Joel. He's a shark and is teaching me. <laughs> Can you tie that? Ray learning to play chess. <laughs> Afraid of that. <laughs> well, that must be Meg and Benji coming back from the show. What's the matter, Benji? Don't you like those love stories? No, I want to see a western. <laughs> Good show? Oh, yes. The boy got the girl. Ah, uh, that's the way I like them. And uh, the preacher got two bucks. And I went to sleep. <laughs> If there's anything else you want me to do, Grandpa, I'll go to bed. No, there ain't nothing. Good night, you Good night. Wait a minute, Meg. Isn't it too early to go to bed? Don't you think I need my beauty sleep? You don't need any beauty sleep. I think you'd better go back in and finish the game with Grandpa. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Folks go to bed kind of early on the farm, don't they, boy? Yeah. Yeah. It's your move, Uncle Joe. Yeah, wait till I get a light. Now me, I get set up all night playing chess. <laughs> a soldier's game. They tell me that fellow Napoleon used to play it all the time. It helped him to figure things out. I guess I've had enough. Well, you're not quitting. Yeah. I, I think I'll go to bed. You just said... I know. I know. But I'm, I'm tired now. Came on all of a sudden. I guess I've been sitting too long, huh? Felt kind of all let out. 
Good night, Ray. Feeling fine, eh? That's good. <laughs> great day, isn't it? What's great about it? I decided something, that's what. Something important. What is it, Grant? Well, I was thinking about us while I was dressing. Thinking how nice it was we was together. Thinking that we mustn't let nothing spoil it. But something is. All kind of jumpy and worried lately. I figured out because there was too much money around here. So I'm going to put it in the bank. I don't like Henry Scudder, but I think his vault is a safer place for money than my desk drawer. Now, tomorrow's a holiday. So the very first thing, the day after, in she goes. What do you think about that, Ray? Sounds sensible. Well, I think I'll go into town and get that stuff for Casey. We can expect those pups any day now, you know. Joel, you've gone plum loco. Telling everybody where that money is is plain inviting trouble. Maybe so. But there are some things you never know until you try it out. Now, after breakfast, I want you two to come with me. Whatever gave you this idea? Chess. Chess? Yep. I never thought much about what you said, Benji, till last night. I caught him cheating at chess. Never trust a fellow that would cheat at chess. Silly. Chess is such a small game, and besides, you were probably only testing your playing. You're supposed to be such an expert. Cheated small things, cheated big things. Yep. Them sort of fellows just can't help themselves. So used to cheating and cheating anything. Well, I think you're both unfair. It doesn't prove anything. Well, we'll see. <clears throat> and remember, honey, you ain't a bit more anxious about that boy than I am. What you aim to do, Joel? Well, if he thinks the money's going to the bank, and he is crooked, he'll try to get it before the day after tomorrow. But what you burying it for? I've seen too many fish get away with the bait. What are you doing out here? Thinking. Thinking about a way to beat Grandpa Chess? You've got a pretty certain idea that I'm a thief, haven't you? Nobody's a thief until the first time. All right, then. Maybe I was thinking about that money. But I wouldn't touch it if it wasn't for you. Me? Yes, you. Why do you think I've been hanging around here? I, I don't know. Oh, don't. don't you see anything at all? Meg, can't you see that I'm crazy about you? Stop it. I don't want to hear any more. You make me sore. You're a darn fresh kid. But I never knew anybody like you before. Meg, I'd do anything for you. Would you, Ray? Certainly I would. Look, honey, this is why I was thinking about that money. Jones lived his life. He doesn't need it. So let's live ours before it's too late. Let's get a good start. Let's take it now while we can. This may be our last chance. No. But, honey... Listen, don't you think I want a chance, too? Do you think I want to end up on the road again, begging and walking till my bones come out of their joints? Think I want to risk my neck jumping on and off trains, ducking cops? I think I want to keep going and going just to forget that I'm sleepy and hungry and cold, squeezing into bread lines until I get booted and chased into rat holes. But you don't have to do that again if you don't want to. Just take that money in there and get out of here. And if I don't? If you don't, you and me are through. Do you mean that, Ray? Certainly I mean it. Listen, you. I'll let you put that act on to see what you're up to. I thought you might have something in you. Something real. 
what you eat. I hate you. I think you're the cheapest little piece of nothing I ever looked at. All my life since I was a kid. I've never known anyone who was decent. No one but that old man in there ever gave me anything. He gave me a place to live. A home of my own. Good food, soft bed. A place to grow things of my own. And you want me to break his heart for a guy like you. Now listen. You listen. Me and Grandpa and Benji don't want you. We can do without you or the money. Go on, take it. It's not in the desk. Buried under the first tree out in back. Grandpa knew what you were like. Go on and take it and you'll larceny with it. And if you ever come as close as that front gate again, I'll take Grant's rifle in there and plug you. Take him long to find out where it was. Try to dig it up with his shoe. Joe! Joe! I seen Ray heading for the storehouse. I think he's after your money. Yeah. But he ain't got it yet. Give me a hand, will you? Look, Uncle Joe, they're all alive. Well, we better get them in the house where it's warm. Ain't they cute? Well, person to think you'd never seen anything just born. One, two... Never mind, let's get them in. Get my uniform and don't be so dang busted sacrilegious. What about the money? Mo oh, well, you get my uniform first, then go get the money. I declare, Joel, I believe that parade means more to you than all that money. Oh, you worry altogether too much about that money. I oh, can't help but worry, Joel. It's a heap of money, and if it ain't used right, it's going to cause a lot of trouble. Uh, you needn't worry about it not being used right. It's going to make four people mighty happy. Four people? I know Meg and Ray's too, but who's the other two? Me and you. Me, because it's going to give the young ones a good start. You, because you're just as crazy about them as I am. You know, I... I'm kind of glad that we ain't got much more of our lives left, because it'll give the youngsters a chance to live their lives without no interference. Well, what are you waiting for? Get going. Okay, Captain. Captain. Dang busted old fool. So that's the story as straight as I can say it. And this time, you, you've got to believe me. I wish I could, Ray, but... But what? I'm really on the level, Meg. Well, if you are on the level, then... Why don't you take that money that you got for the farm and... Use it as a stake in the city. Make me see that you're not just hanging around waiting for an old man to die. Meg. I'm sorry. Well, don't be, because you're right. And after the parade, I'm going to tell Grant that I'm going back to the city. That 
that guy I've been looking for. Come on. Last one's the gate to Rotten Egg. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait a minute. I want to get the mail. I'll be right with you. Uh, hey, Ray. Hello, bright boy. Ain't you glad to see us? You kind of gave me a scare. Scare? What have you got to be scared about? Nothing. What are you doing here? Well, I'll tell you. Things got a little tough in the city, so well, we figure we need a little vacation. Ain't that right, fellas? Sure. sure. I showed Sam your letter. We thought this would be a good place to spend a little time. But you can't do that. I was just leaving. Old man sped up on me. Said you'll call the cops if I don't blow. Guess he must have got wise to me. Suspenders. Always have trouble with them. Hey, it's getting late and I ain't dressed yet. Why didn't you put your suspenders on before you put on the pants? Well, that's your job. Say, you ain't got this button in the right place. Uh, hey! Why, I've worked my fingers to the bone sewing that ratted uniform. Here. Hey, say, you. don't you go throwing rubbish on my parade uniform. Rubbish. Your money's in that box, you old galoot. Oh. Well, I got a safe place for it. Yeah, the only safe place for that is the bank. I got a better place in the bank. Uh, I still say you ought to put it in the bank tomorrow. Why, a mattress is the first place a crook would look. Well, there ain't no crooks in this house. Uh, well, maybe you're right, bright boy. If that's the way the old man feels about it, it's all right with me. Go ahead, Al. That must be Ray getting the car ready. Strangers with you. Strangers? Well, it must be Ray's friends. Hey, Ray! Ray! Yes, Gramp? Bring your friends in. But they're just leaving, Gramp. No, no, don't let them go. Bring them in. Come on. Hey, what's this all about? But I'm trying to tell you... So the old man don't like you, huh? Kill the motor. Let's go in and see what's going on here. Now look, Sam. Are they coming in, Meg? Yes, Grant. Say, Benji, go out in the pantry and get some of that Applejack. Applejack. Grant, we haven't much time, and I... Oh, but we don't often have company come. Now, here they are. Uncle Joel, I want you to meet some friends of mine from the city. This is Sam, Nick, Alf, and Dressy. Oh, hi. hi. Meg good. and Joel Bentham. Nice of you fellas to come out to see Ray. Yeah. Nice surprise, isn't it? Won't you sit down? All right. What are you all dressed up for, Grandpa? Masquerade? <laughs> I'll bet he's one of those big lodge guys. <laughs> Ain't you, old-timer? No. <laughs> Uncle Joe's the last GAR veteran. Well, what's the GAR? I was on the WPA once. Ah, oh, forget it. I guess that really is something, huh? Yes, sir. -y. Say, why don't you boys come see the parade? Oh, I'm sorry. We don't care much about parades. But why don't you run along, Grandpa? Well, I guess I better. We're kind of late. You go right ahead. We'll wait for you. Sure. Now make yourselves right to home. Yeah. Come on. We got to get going. All right. That's Benji. Half man, half misery. Hiya, Benji. <laughs> oh, we need some glasses, Ray. All right, Uncle Joe. I'll get them for you. That's a good boy. Hey, this isn't a bad spot Ray picked out. Got a match on? Just like home, sweet home. Did you send for them? No. Then how did they find this place? Well, I... I sent them a letter, but... Did you tell them about the money? Of course not. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, relax. We'll be going in a little while. Just take it easy. Ah, but this place giving me the jitters. Say, take a look at this. No, I'm beginning to get it. Say, Grandpa, 
Ray must be losing his manners. He never told me you were a celebrity. Oh, I don't know nothing about that. I'm just a G.A.R. veteran. Yeah, I know, but uh, what are you going to do with all that money? Oh, I got plans. Oh, yeah, got plans, huh? Hey, if we keep standing around here, we're sure going to miss that parade. Oh, that's so. Say, where's my hat, Benji? I left it in your room. No, you didn't. Well, I'll prove that I did. Say, Ray, you fill the glasses, will you? All right. All right. Now, where is it? Hey. Okay. Really snake it at a bit yet. Oh, well. Come on, children, or we'll be awful late. Well, how about the drinks, Uncle Joe? Oh, never Joe? mind the drinks. Leave them for your friends. Come on. Nobody's going anywhere yet. Now, listen, Sam. You keep out of this, bright boy. I ain't going to miss that parade for nobody. What's the matter with your friends, Ray? They're not my friends. Shut up. Now, about that $50,000. Where is it? Don't tell him anything, Graham. I told you Leave that... Leave him alone. You're a crook. Listen, Grandpa, we want that 50,000 bucks. And I'm in no mood for fooling. All right. You can have the money. Oh, no, no, now, quiet, kid. I ain't fool enough to cross a critter like this. I know when I'm cornered, but I don't want no shooting. The money ain't worth it. That's what I call good judgment, General. But you'll have to wait for it. What do you mean, wait? Well, you don't think I'd keep all that money here, do you? It's in the bank. Is that so? Sure, sure it is. Okay, then we'll go to the bank with you. But if you're lying... You're forgetting it's decoration day, ain't you? The bank don't open till tomorrow. Yeah, that's right, boss. All right, then we'll all wait right here. Oh, no, we don't, Sam. Grant's going to that parade and nothing's going to stop him. You don't suppose on the count of coming into money, he might not show up. Shame on you. Well, that's no way to talk, Zeke. Well, I only thought on the count of we used to treat him for a little of my bad. Maybe he's trying to get even. I tell you, Joel's not the kind of a man who does things like that. Fact mm -hmm. is, he ain't here. No. Well, we might as well admit that if he don't show up at all, it no more than serves us right. That's the first honest thing I ever heard you say, Henry Scudder. Hey, where are you going? No place. I was just going to get a glass of water. Yeah, well, you stay right here. Where's that money? It's in the... Well, it's in the bank. Say, I'll bet you that dough ain't in the bank at all. Old geezers like him would hide it in the cupboard or the mattress or someplace close by. Yeah, let's take a look around. Sit down. And I'll bet you he meant something besides bank. Yeah, what about that? I tell you, it's in the bank. Well, if you want me to believe you, let me see your bank book. Well, I... I ain't got it here. Well, where is it? I know where it is. It's in the safety deposit box with the rest of your papers. Yeah, that's it. Now I know you're all lying. Where's that money? I don't know. I ain't got it. He ain't got it. I have. Mm, well, that's fine. Now we're getting someplace. You just turn it over to me, and we'll be right on our way. I never do that. Besides, it ain't mine. I'm holding it in trust for a couple of youngsters. Listen, Grandpa, you wouldn't want me to do something I'd rather not. I ain't scared of you. I fought real men for four years. Yes, you fought. Now, here, let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Are you dirty little All right, now, come on, start talking. I won't tell nothing. Hey, let him go. Let him go. I'll tell. Don't you tell nothing. All right, when are you going to start talking? All right, it's in the... What's that? Sounds like a band. It is a band. They've got an army with it. Hey, hey, come on. we got to get out of here. Go ahead, Nick. Come on, Al. It's a parade. The eggs are coming. I'll fix them, crooks. Come on, Benji. Open the window, Benji. You busted his tire, you old sharp shooter. You said the gun wouldn't shoot. <laughs> I got him! I got him! <laughs> I winged him, kid! I winged him! Must not let him get away! <laughs> hey, boy! Go after those fellas, will you? Bunch of crooks! Yes, 
we showed them how we treat crooks in Cleardale. Hey, this is the first time in my life I was ever glad to see you. Well, I'm sure glad I got here in time, Joel. Well, what'd you come for? You're late for the parade, so I figured we'd better come out here and get you. Well, now, that's mighty nice of you. Well, it was only because we was afraid an old fool like you might miss the Chicago train. What did the president think if you didn't show up? Well, he'd probably think I was modest, but he'd be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't that modest. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Well, must be making tracks. Got to be going. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Busted. 